My message is grace, actually. It's now what is grace? My message is grace. Amen. He spoke about grace. He spoke about grace revolution. There is certain things, certain word, when they come from a leader in the church, you have to embrace them. You have to make them yours. You have to tap into that revelation. When you do that, things start happening. You may choose to reject them. You may choose to doubt. Nothing will happen, hallelujah. For me, in my house, I chose to embrace, hallelujah, grace. This is very important. It is by grace that my brother over here, when he was coming to a meeting here in this church, not that long time ago, on a road that he knew very well, that's the, the way to church. He did not do something he didn't, he didn't know how to do or he has not done before. But that day, something unexpected happened. He got re-rendered. He got hit all, in all ways. When I saw the pictures of his vehicle, I was amazed. When everyone thought that the people in this vehicle are dead, they managed to exit the vehicle, husband and wife. They are here, alive, nothing broken, not even a tiny little thing. That is grace, hallelujah. Another person in the same situation could have been dead. Hallelujah. We learned the testimony of uh, evangelist Lori. He was going on mission to, to India when he got in England. He lost his wallet with everything, including cash money. He just sent a message saying, brothers and sisters, pray for me. I lost everything. I am going on a mission, a, a place where people are expecting me. I even don't have my, I have nothing, even my passport. Everything is gone. So we prayed. Some people doubted, saying, okay, we, we, we probably have to, send, to find a way to send him money. But we prayed, we prayed, we prayed. He stayed in faith. I remember his messages saying, uh, I, will, I think I will be contacted tomorrow once they have checked the lost and found. <laughs> that is called faith. And by the grace of God, when they checked whatever they wanted to check, they brought him his wallet with everything, including cash. That is the grace of God. How many people have lost things, even tiny little thing, and then you will never get it? Can you imagine someone is bringing you your wallet with cash? Hmm? That does not happen. But because we pray, because we believe what we pray, because we believe that God will honor our prayer, it happened. The grace. 2018 is a revolution of grace. You take it and you're in. You don't, you're out. I am serious. I thought this morning we should continue on this powerful message of grace. This is something you're going to hear often and often here. And then I said, let's define grace. Grace is giving you Something that you don't deserve. You didn't work for. Maybe you hoped for. But there is absolutely nothing you did. And then boom, you have it. Like eternal life. You tell me where you went. What store. Because I want to know. And you purchased grace. You purchased eternal life. Tell me. Oh, tell us. All of us. We, we can even pay. Okay? You tell us. It is by grace. It is by grace. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 28 says, It is by grace that we were saved. I know it sounds crazy. 
But I remember this uh, robber when Jesus was crucified. Two other guys were there. One on his left and the other one on his right. If you get to the time where they crucify you, <laughs> you can imagine what kind of person are you except Jesus. Hallelujah. And this guy, despite everything he went through, everything he has done, but grace knocked at his door. Brothers and sisters, this morning, grace is knocking at your door. Grace is knocking at your door. It may not be for you. It may be for your son. It may be for your daughter. But grace is kicking in, not only today, but this year. Would you open your door? Would you let God invade your privacy and change you? Would you let him take over? Let grace operate in your life. It is not something you work for. It is given. It is free. And more importantly, it's something you don't deserve. Ah. I thought adding something on my definition by saying grace is not giving you what you deserve. Yeah, I was expecting everyone to be quiet, but we, we'll get there. <laughs> Revelations chapter 21 verse 8 says, But for the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire, which is the second death. Let's be honest this morning. Let's be honest this morning. And you tell me if you don't qualify. If you didn't lie, there is something that you have done. You qualify for this burning fire. I qualify. If you don't qualify, I qualify. And I know many people, some are here, they do qualify too. We have done a lot of things that are never right. You had a, a, I remember Apostle was saying, even when I drive, I say, okay, oh, why did I do this? It happens to me too. I do something crazy when I'm driving. And then rather I say, oh my God, what did I just do? Sometimes I say, I am sorry. Eh? Yeah, I just cut someone off because I got pissed. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I just say, oh, God, I am sorry. We all qualify for this fire. But by the grace of the Lord, the grace we don't deserve, today we are saved. Je ladies and gentlemen, grace is not giving you what you deserve as well. I deserve death, but I got life. I didn't study, and here I am, I graduate. I don't understand what happened. I didn't deserve this dip diploma. I didn't de deserve this work. But I am here, I have work, I have diploma, I have kids. I have a great life. I open a business, and then people start coming in. I don't know where they're coming from. Eh? The grace of God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all qualify. More importantly, we all qualify for the grace of God. Uh, because there is no store where you can go and buy it. There is nothing you can do to deserve it. Grace is a word that we're going to hear a lot for 2018. That's something we have been given. We have to understand it. And then we have to tap into it. Hallelujah. We live a time where we hear a lot of things, especially me, um, social media and stuff. So we may misrepresent grace. We may understand the grace a different way. We may even replace grace and substitute grace by something else in a different word. Some will say grace 
It's probably a chance, but I'm here to tell you it's not. It is not chance. It is just something that God does for us. I remember when my wife, uh, when we moved from uh, Montreal, we were living there because it was uh, our comfort zone. We were French. We did not speak English at all. And then um, I came first. And the, the first very day I got here, within an hour, I met Apostle. I didn't know him. We just met, we connected, and we stayed friends. My wife was in school in Montreal, and then after school, she came, like six months after. When she got here, my wife is very positive. She, she, I mean, it's just crazy. I went to school to learn English at Bovali College, and then the teacher said to me, what are you doing here? I said, I'm learning English. She said, well, you don't need. You speak English, you write very well, and on top, you're French. Go find a job. She literally kicked me out. And then I went to find a job and I got a job. When my wife came, when I said, I think you should go to Bovali College and then learn some English, she said, no, I would like to work. I said, this is not Quebec. Here, no one speaks French. So you need to learn some French. She said, some English, I'm sorry. Thank you, you you following me. So we prayed. I mean, a crazy prayer. We said by Monday, she has to have a job. You know, some of the prayers you just pray, you want to take it back. Because we forgot it was Friday afternoon. <laughs> Everyone is home. And then on Monday, surely no one will give you a job. You won't believe me. By the grace of God, that very weekend, someone replied to one of her emails saying, we would like to contact you. We want to be in touch with you. Are you available this weekend? This weekend. She called them back. I was on Saturday. And on Sunday, they said, Come on Sunday, because it's quiet here, we're going to send someone to the office to do the interview and everything. You know, sometimes I am scared to pray. <laughs> because what I'm praying for may happen. That Sunday, she went to, to the office, a building downtown. Instead of doing an interview... They showed her the entire place. They said, okay, this will be your office. <laughs> we need someone who speaks French, and you will be our financial uh, finance manager, or whatever they call them. She went from nothing to become the boss. <laughs> the grace of God can knock at your door and even confuse you because you say, okay, this is not possible. So, be careful if I pray for you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> grace is not a chance. Some people will say grace is the fruit of work, a hard work. If you work hard, something will happen. I know. You can work hard and nothing happens. But grace has nothing to do with working hard or not. Staying in that work thing, when I applied, because my teacher was pushing me and my wife as well, I applied where I'm, working, I'm still working today. And I, I said to myself, these people are crazy because I cannot speak. In, this is a professional job, so I need some communication in English. I, I, you know, it's not possible. I applied. It's like they take you, your background is accounting, and then you're applying to work in a medical field. You even don't know the little thing how they call it. And that's where I got pushed to. I applied. I went through seven different tests. And after each test, I passed the test. It's okay. 
I don't understand. And then a second test, I pass again. I mean, I've never been this un uncomfortable in my life when doing a test. Do you understand? I open the paper, I read, and I educate myself. Because what they're talking about, sometimes I never heard about it. So I read, I educate myself. When I see the question, hmm, I say, okay, if you ask me this question, it's because of this and because of that. And then I pass. And then I got a job. And then within two years, I moved up to a, a certain level. Uh, a, a level where it's the resource people. People they go to when other agents are stuck. And two years after that, I said, okay, I was born to be a leader. I applied to be a leader, and I'm a leader in the organization. <laughs> Definitely, I went through everything. I learned everything, and then it was like drinking water. You just drink, and then it... I understood everything like, like this. <clears throat> Never been to school for and nothing. The grace of God is knocking at people's doors today. You don't need to know. You need to know God. And you need to know that God is on your side. And there, just go knock at some, at some doors. Just do it. Hallelujah. Talking about my friend here. When he graduated, when he retired, I'm talking about evangelist. I'm picking up on him today. When he, uh, he um, retired, he had no clue God had a purpose for him. He had no clue that he will become the evangelist that the entire India knows today. That the entire Africa knows today. He had no clue. He just let him, himself go. He heard a voice saying, go. Make all the nations my disciples. And the grace of God did everything else. God is telling some people here, go. Make all the nations my disciples. There. I will back you up. I will. He backed him up. He can back you up as well. Hallelujah. Let's use this word we got for this year. Let's put God to test. And see if really the grace of God exists. Let's put him to test. Hallelujah. Amen. I would like to hear some people responding to me. Amen. Let's put God to test. Hallelujah. The book of, uh, the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 10 says, It is by the grace of God that I am who I am. I don't know about you. It is only by the grace of the Lord that I am who I am. I'm not going to go into all my testimonies. That will be for next time. But let me be very clear. It is only by the grace of God that we are here today. That we're standing today. Apostle told us at his um, birth date. He was sure he will never reach 50. So this was very emotional for him. You learned about the boy from Nyamachali. Or whatever place he was born. Who dreamed when he saw a bike, he touched the bike, he touched the tires. And he told his friends, one day I will have this thing. And then everyone was laughing at him. And this is a, a person who did not know who his dad was. And the dad did not know he had a child. They grew separate. He was in a village somewhere in Africa, and dad was a professor at the University of Montreal in Canada. There is no way you can find your dad. By the grace of God, when he reached 20 years old, he found his dad. There is no question. Amen. Hallelujah. There was no doubt. You look alike. There is no DNA test, nothing. It's your son. And the dad embraced the son in the house. He was happy, my firstborn. That is the grace of God. 
How many people were born in Nyamachali? Eh? How many? And they are still there. How many? The grace of God. Hallelujah. It is by the grace of God that I am who I am. It is by the grace of God that someone here heard the word, the word of God saying, Go and make all the nations my disciples. It is the work of God behind. You take it or you leave it. Hallelujah. Three years ago, we were renting at the community hall. Remember? Not that long time ago. It is by the grace of God that we found this big facility in the middle, in the center of the, the city. Extraordinary position. We serve people from north, south, east, and west. We don't have any parking issue. Remember our old church on Center Street? It was a nightmare. I know the community hall had everything we needed, but it was not a place for us. We were renting. Here, we are home Amen. by the grace of God. I remember one of our elders here. She was growing old like everyone else. She wanted to get married. And then people were coming. She was saying, no, you are not the person God uh, told me to marry. And then one after another, one and after another. And then she was saying, okay, God, what's going on? Point the right person. Come on. And then she was getting old and old. And then she started saying, okay, this is not for me. Hmm. The last word belongs to God. Today, Elder Sandrine is married, has a beautiful son, and a wonderful husband. He is all smiling over there. Hallelujah. Amen. The same grace is knocking at some people's doors. Would you open? 2018 has been declared a year of grace revolution in marriages as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5 verse 16 to 18 says, Everyone sinned, but through grace everyone is made right. I added this one for you to understand the grace of God upon your life. You probably don't own a BMW. And you're measuring the grace of the Lord by the, the, the assets you have. You are missing it. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, The wages of sin is death. Hmm? How many times should you die every day? Every day. Just because of your sins, because the, the wages of sins is death. How many times? But Romans 5, chapter 16, chapter 5 says, Everyone sinned, but by the grace of God, everyone is made right. This is very important for me to tell you. It is by the grace of God that you have been made right. It is not because you're doing an extraordinary effort, it is not by that. It is by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Let me quickly talk about the hindrance to the understanding of grace and actually what is preventing some of us just to go ahead and embrace the grace of God. We're all coming from a certain background, religious background. Personally, I was Catholic. Yeah. My entire family is still Catholic, most of them. I was following the priest everywhere they were going, but they never touched me. Let me make that clear. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Religion is defined as our attempt to earn God's favor by adhering to rules and regulations. Any kind of religion comes with rules and comes with regulations. If you do this, you'll get this. You better pray five times a day. 
Religion is a lie. Yeah. I have been there as a Catholic. Apostle have been there as a Muslim. He prayed five times a day. I did everything they needed me to do. We visited the poor people when I was 13, 12, 14. Every time we had vacation, we, we had to go clean houses. We had to do the right thing in the hope that God will pull out blessings that we can now contain. And that was wrong. That was a lie. Hallelujah. Religion will tell you that if you do good and you keep doing good, if you do good enough, you will attract God. Our parents, people we know, all the relatives are still in this thing. If people understood the grace of God, churches will be full. But they are not. They will do all the salam alaikum and all the things, thinking that the more you do that, the more you attract God. That is not true. That is a lie. Because religion will not save you. It is the grace of God that actually saves you. Amen? You... Yeah, thank you. You can attend church. You go from one church to another church. If you have never given your life to Jesus, you are not saved. It is not the fact that you attend some, somewhere, something, that you follow some rules that will make you a, a son of the most high God. Eternal life is not in you if you have never said yes to Jesus. Hallelujah. Religion will say if you do more and you keep doing more, you will make the cut. No. It is by grace that we make the cut. It is by grace that we have eternal life. It is not by our own work. Hallelujah. Grace will always remind you it is done. Brother, you have made the cut. Brother, you are in. Hallelujah. The grace of God, not what you do. The other thing religion do, the religion focuses on the appearance. You see how pressed dress, the Pharisees and all those people when you read the Bible, remember how they dress. The appearance is fantastic. Have you ever seen a priest who walk like this? Ever. You have to walk holy. You know? You have to look holy. That's how you have to do. Appearance. We say in French, la vie ne fait pas le moine. If I introduce that, I will say, clothes don't make the priest. Okay? <laughs> but that's not a good English. You cannot judge a book by its cover. But I wanted to use priest. So you cannot make a book by its cover. It says, la vie ne fait pas le moine. Hallelujah. So the appearance, religion will bring you to something that, when I'm talking about appearance, understand what is outside, right? Because the grace is inside. The grace doesn't care how you look like outside. The grace cares how you look inside. What is coming from inside? Hallelujah. So while religion is focusing on appearance, grace is focusing on changing you inside. What matters for God is inside. If the inside has changed, you will see the outside behaving differently. Amen? Religion is full of rules. You shall not eat this. You shall not drink. You will see people, all of a sudden, they are wearing things on the, the head, others wearing clothes up to here. I mean, why can't you guys communicate and then agree? Because sometimes I'm confused. If you go here, no, 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 you have to wear this. Where did you read that in the Bible? Ah, okay, you go here, these people too have some other rules too. Okay, can you all agree so you have the same rules? No. That is religion. The inside is grace, is God. 
The outside is what people come up with. Hallelujah. You want to paint yourself in blue? Go ahead. Who cares? As long as your heart is not blue. <laughs> that is the only thing that matters. Hallelujah. God will focus on your inside. God will focus on a relationship that you have with him. If you have a good relationship with God, you will have a good relationship with uh, other people. Religious is all about fear. Fear, fear, fear. Fear of not doing enough. Because we never do enough. You never please God by your work. It's impossible. It is impossible. That's why Jesus came to redeem us from this hard work of trying to please God. And you know we never please God. It is not possible. I remember a friend of mine who is a seventh uh, Adventist. Uh, there is a lot of things he cannot do. Oh, Saturday, 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 okay. Saturday has replaced God. So one day I, I asked him a question. Do you eat on Saturday? Uh, yes, but I don't cook. I cook the day before. Oh, okay. So do you warm up your food? There is something you do. It is not possible to observe all these rules. It, it is impossible. When you spend your time focusing on the outside, focusing on how you walk, sometimes you'll forget and then you'll run. Eh? If there is a problem, you're going to run. And then you forget that you have to walk holy. It is not possible, brothers and sisters. Grace brings freedom. If I want to walk, I walk. <laughs> Hallelujah. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 says, It is for free that Christ saved us. Today, we are free. You are free. You are free to run. You are free to dance. You are free to jump. You are free to to do everything you to suck if you want freedom some other places it's rules women sit here men sit there rules 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 because they are not free hallelujah it is important that we all understand this freedom that comes by grace amen i'm tempted to to jump over certain things just to make sure i'm on time Grace has nothing to do with performance. So stop running all over the place. That is not how you make the cut. Not at all. Be free. Hallelujah. When you mess up, God does not turn away from, from you. God turns to you. God turns to you. Hallelujah. We, all, we are all sinners. We have all done something that is not right. Sometimes we are ashamed about certain things we have done. Sometimes we, we, we can't even reproach another person who is doing something right. Because we know we are coming from there. And then we forget we are free. When you repent, God comes to you. The Bible tells us about the story of the shepherd who left the 99 sheep to run, to go find the one that was not there. That is what God does. When you go down because you're smoking, because you're drinking, because you're doing something wrong. Don't think a second that God has turned his back to you. No. God is actually chasing you down. God loves you, and regardless of what you've been involved in even right now, God is looking for you. God will never condemn you. God will come to you, and then God will do this. Come to me, my son. It's okay. It's okay. That love, we as parents, we have to display it. Sometimes we go hard on our kids, hard. 
Hold. Is it how God operates with us? We just have to say what you did, it's not okay. But it's okay. Come here. There is hope you're going to change. There is hope. There is hope. Hallelujah. God will literally pass everyone and will come to you. Absolutely. All the people who are in prison, it's okay. It's already done. You're already there. But God is for you. He's coming for you. You can change. You can switch your life and you become something different. Hallelujah. 2018 will bring things here. 2018, I am proclaiming that God will chase you down. In your weaknesses, God will chase you. Grace is knocking at the door this morning. Would you open? I don't care how far you have been. You know, sometimes we speak with people, so okay, you know, I have to make my life right first. I cannot just come to church. I really have to make my life right. But you're wrong. Do you think God does not know where you are at? Eh? <laughs> Who do you want to make your life right with? Yeah. He knows. So don't hesitate. Go to those people who need help. Embrace them. Welcome them in the house. Even if they're not clean, we'll clean them. We just have to bring them. That's how we display the love of God. 2018. We, we really have to understand. It's not how bad, how terrible you have been. It is about how better you're going to be. When Jesus knocks at your door, your life changes. We heard the testimony of one of the ushers. He's here this morning. He told us he was drinking crazy. I mean, he was doing everything horrible, everything you can imagine. One day, uh, his friends didn't want to see him around. Uh, they wanted to kill him. So they just beat him to death. They throw him somewhere thinking he was dead. And this is the person we have been trying to bring to church for, for, for some time. He will come and then he will go back because he was just drinking. His mind was not here. To the point they, he got beaten, they broke everything, and then they left him for, 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 for dead. And uh, the police uh, found him. They brought him to the hospital, uh, took care of him. <laughs> Today he is an usher. Today is here. It is not about what you have done in the past. It is about what you're going to do in the future. This is a word for everyone here. You are a single lady. You have known 20 plus men before you turn 20. Who cares? That's the past. Leave the past behind you. <clears throat> Let's move forward. Let's start something new. Let's become another person God wants you to become. Hallelujah. I'm not pointing at anybody, okay? I'm just saying. Hmm? It's not even a revelation, okay? It's just my mind, okay? The reason I'm saying this is there is no time left. There is no time left. Don't be hooked up on your past that is still dragging you down. It's still reminding you all the crazy things you have done. That's the past. That is behind me. In front of me, I see the fruit of grace. In front of me, I see progress. Would you let the grace of God change you today? The grace of God is knocking at your door. Today is the day of transformation. Today is a day of change. I am moving forward. CPF is moving forward. 2018 is our year. Hallelujah. 
Jesus is coming back. Let's change our mentality. Amen? The other problem we have, we tend to write people off. This brother was probably written off already. No, no, the, the, you know, he, he drinks a lot, whatever. We, we write people off it, it, like we created them. The creator didn't write them off, but we, create, we write them off. You remember the, the story of Saul, who became Paul. Saul was, oh my God, unbelievable. Saul's job was to kill Christians. He delighted in it. He did it with passion. That's something he loved doing. On the route of Damascus, he accounted grace. Grace knocked at his door. Saul became Paul. I don't know what you're involved in. I don't know which area of your life you're saying right now, I am Saul 100%. Today, we're bringing you on the Damascus route. Because your name is changing today into Paul. Grace is knocking at your door. Think about any area you're struggling with. The spirit of Paul is kicking in today. Hallelujah. I see and I can feel change today. Hallelujah. Thank you. If you're here and you say, I am discouraged, I have tried, it's not working. My role this morning is to say grace is chasing you down. Check the discouragement. Leave space for grace, hallelujah. I am depressed. Grace this morning is chasing you down. I feel I'm unworthy. I'm good to nothing. Grace today is chasing you down, hallelujah. I am lazy. There is nothing I can do. I cannot work. Grace is chasing you today. If grace changed soul, grace can change you too. I am on drugs. I drink crazy. Don't worry, brother. Don't worry, sister. Grace is ch chasing you down today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would like to finish by, no, I will skip this. It will be for another day. Your best days are in front of you. Your best days are in front of you. You may not see nothing right now. You may not think of something good for you right now. But God is in control. Everything is under his grip. He has everything like this. God is in church. God is in control. What you have to do is dare. Put him to test. Hallelujah. I did not deserve to be loved. I did not deserve to be considered. I did not deserve to, be, to have a position. But grace knocked at my door. Grace is not respectful of any age. Grace does not care if you speak English or French. Grace does not care about anything. Today, I'm asking you to trust God. Open your door so dress can come in. Open your door, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you accept to tap into the grace of God, God will do what you were not able to do. If there is anything that comes through your mind and says, I'm unable to do this. Do you think God is unable as well? I don't care if I can do something or I can't. But I care because God is able. I could not work and do well in the field where I work. I had no clue, zero clue. But God qualified me. Today in this mission we're doing with the church, 
with all the leaders, you may feel you're not qualified because you never had the opportunity to take the mic and speak. It's not about you. It is not about you. It is about the qualifier who, qual who will qualify you. So I trust God will qualify me. I trust God will qualify most of us. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Say glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, God, because you are the qualifier. Oh, hallelujah. You will redeem us. You will clean us. You will make us new. Today, we are opening our heart to receive from you. Oh, hallelujah. God, come and touch. Come and transform us. We want to look like you. We want to please you, Lord. Not our will, but your will will be done. Hallelujah. Your will. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.